Come join us in Alabama for today's show where we're going to be hunting turkeys with my good friend Lee Thomas. Any day in the woods with a firearm in your hand is better than a, a day behind the desk. Jerry, if it looks like I'm going to get gored, put it around in me, would you? <laughs> I was thinking if they come at this, I'm going to trip you. <laughs> How can you have all these hills without valleys, huh? Nice shot. Good bird. Oh, ho, ho. Look at that now. I want you to come out in your loincloth and me with a rifle. I'll think it's a white bear. In the Woods with Ron and Jerry is brought to you by Envirologic of Alabama, products that make sense for you and your environment. By Landis International, there is no substitute for perfection. By MPP Incorporated, flying Ron and Jerry to the next day in the woods. By the 500 Magnum Energy Bar, power for now, power for later. And by Karma LLC, an elevated state of awareness. In today's show, we're going to be hunting turkeys in Alabama. It's going to be a fun time, and it's going to be interesting because I am not a turkey hunter. Well, I'm not a turkey hunter, <laughs> hunter either, Jerry. I guess if we're going to do a in the woods with Ron and Jerry, we have to learn. We're going to have to learn how to turkey hunt, and this is our this is our first go at it. You know, I've killed a few turkeys in my life, but that's usually been accidental, and go sit out there and a, a bird strolls by while it's season, and you take them. You know, but we've asked a real expert, and I do mean a real Alabama expert, Lee Thomas, to give us some guidance on this. Uh, Hunt, and you're going to get to meet him. He is a he is a avid turkey hunter. He's a great guy, and there's some uh, interesting footage. It's, it's going to be fun. So let's get in the woods with Ron and Jerry and see what happens. We've set up a blind at a spot here in Karma, which is the uh, Alabama farm, where we always see turkeys. I mean, we call it Turkey City. I don't know why. It's just a small a pine a woodlot that's about 15 years old. And I guess it's a transition zone for them if turkeys have such a thing. But many times after the morning breeding is gone, has been completed, we see uh, gobblers coming through here. So we just set up a little intercept zone and see if we can't offer them a, another young hen. Good morning. How you doing? I'm really well. This morning consisted of one conference call, three phone calls, and zero turkeys. I would call it a successful morning, any way you look at it. Where do you want to put that uh, put that blind, Lee? Right here. I'm gonna put these decoys out too while we're here. I've got some more decoys back at the house we could bring out. You can see, it. You can see a long way. You want to put that right back? You want to put that back right right here behind that That's little deadfall? Yeah, and let that man know you kind of help break it up. Okay, dokie. That was pretty interesting. Pull on that other umbrella. This is one of those blinds that cannot possibly be put up by one individual. Now we got it screwed up. Good. Here we go. How big is this thing? This thing I know right here has to come this way. How in the world do you put it, put it back together? I think I'm gonna have a permanent blind right here. I can't take any more. <laughs> Remove your five hook grind blind from the carrying case. We got that. Locate the top hub. I think we, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. 
by unfolding the blind and letting corners fall to the ground. Corners are falling to the ground. Engage the top hub by pulling firmly on the web handle. Ain't nothing to it. That's pretty slick now. You know, I was watching this clip and I always thought there were three stooges. Apparently two's plenty not to be able to set up a blind. It's my first day turkey hunting in Alabama and Lee's put me in a spot on the road where he's put a turkey on the roost the night before. After the sun came up and Lee called a little while and the bird didn't respond, he figured the bird went in the other direction and he decided it's time to go after it. Went silent. Go wait for Ron and them up. What do you think? Yep. I think they're sleeping. I hadn't heard them all morning. Sometimes churches just don't do what, what I want them to do. <laughs> they don't do what they're supposed to, huh? They're not very well placed. <laughs> What'd you see this morning, Jerry? We saw very little, but we heard a lot of turkeys. Is that right? You heard a lot of turkeys? A lot, turkeys? Of, gob a lot of hens, and we heard that one gobbler who was uh, we, uh, very vocal. We, I think we were hearing the same gobbler. Yeah, probably. Uh, I wouldn't have done anything different this morning. I mean, we were set up perfect. It was just ideal. But it was hens everywhere. We, I mean, 360 degrees, there was a hen yapping off, young gobbler yapping. My idea is to move off the property and go over to Karma hunt karma, you know, give it a break. That's right. And uh, probably a good idea. He likes that. Mm-hmm. Got a pretty good beard on him, doesn't he? Yeah, this one, this one, you'd you'd have a chance on him. Okay, we got a turkey out in this field strutting with a hen. He's showing off for a hen. So what we're gonna do? Lee's gonna go back the way we came in, and kind of scratch on his turkey call a little bit, see if he can get his attention. And if he can, we're gonna try and sneak up behind him and see if we can't ambush him from the backside. So that's the plan. Let's see how it works. And just behind that hay bale, we're going to go to that hay bale. Walk right behind me. If we can get to those hay bales, we can kill him. We've got to watch that hand don't bust us though. If he goes to the right a little more, we're going to move this way to my right pitch and get that hay bale between us. About, about three more steps and we're going to move. He's going that way. Goes behind that water trough. I'm gonna move up to the fence. Get the camera ready here. Yeah? Talking to turkeys hard enough if you're by yourself, but when you got two people and one of them's toting the camera, it's extra hard. And hands watching. I made it to the gate and I was ready to shoot. My cameraman got up there and set the camera down and it was right behind a gate panel 
By the time he got it cranked high enough, all we could do is watch the bird run off. This segment of In the Woods with Ron and Jerry has been brought to you by Landis International. All right, what's the plan? All right, we got the gobble, gobble right there. Okay. The hands are just right here. We're going to try to split the difference between the two. Okay. We're trying to keep it out of that field if we can. If we ever get in that field, we're going to have a hands full. Okay. So let's go see what we can do. All right. We'll follow me. Okay. Well, that was fun, but I'm getting frustrated, man. I'm tired of seeing Jake. I'll tell you what, that's ridiculous, dog. No. That's four this morning I could have killed, and it's running. we're running out of time. They can so. count their blessings, because yeah. it's, it's, getting, it's getting close to Easter. It's getting time to, it's time to eat something. We, yeah. need to, we need to find that dad. I'm, glad you, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you now. <laughs> he did good. He did good. I don't I, usually show that much restraint after that all this short. frustration, but... Uh, we need to get a big boy this afternoon. I think uh, I think you know where one is now. I know we we got him located. I thought we were in pretty good shape. We did we hadn't spooked him, and uh, I just hope those jakes don't show this afternoon. Well, I got three hunts left. They got three three more chances. You know, and if they show themselves tomorrow, if we don't get one today, we may be eating them. We're on a greenfield this morning in Alabama. It's kind of a grisly day, and we've already seen a couple of jakes crossing the road. We're hoping that because of the drizzle, we'll, we'll see them come out into the green fields earlier than uh, they would normally come out. That's what the locals tell us. Let's give her a go and see what happens. <laughs> Put his head up, I'm gonna take him. There he is. This has been the hardest turkey hunt of my life. It started nine days ago, and we have been hunting morning and night, and sometimes morning, noon, and night, to finally get this two and a half year old. Tom. We came out this morning uh, a little bit late on purpose just because we were wearing ourselves out uh, with the hunting. Climbed into a, uh, a blind, put out a couple of decoys, and he came up on his own at uh, about 8.45. Uh, I can't, it was fairly close shot, so I really don't know why the first uh, shot didn't put him down, but he was... Uh, hurt real bad, ran about a hundred yards and was waiting here where I put the coup de gras on him. I apparently just didn't get enough lead into the uh, neck and uh, head area. 
and cannot blame the Benelli for that. I think we can blame Ron in nine days of uh, hard hunting. Closed captioning for this program has been brought to you by Envirologic of Alabama, products that make sense. Well, I got an opportunity to go up to Mississippi, so we got up there and we're able to, to make a turkey hunt in Mississippi. Well, I guess, uh, I guess it was a good thing because you were having a hard time in Alabama. I told you earlier I'm not a turkey hunter, but let's see what happens in Mississippi. The first afternoon in Mississippi, I set up a ground blind overlooking a small green field. After a slow afternoon, it looked like all the birds had gone to the roost, so we decided to pack up and head back to the truck. I thought I'd give a yell or two to see if we could find out where the birds are set up for the night. Woo! Not a good owl. No response either. I think they're laughing too hard. Come on. <laughs> We set up, got some decoys out in front of us. We saw some hens in this location yesterday and uh, they've been gobblers through here. Um, there's some sign out here, it's pretty obvious turkeys have been dusting out here, so we're gonna try sitting here. Uh, we're gonna scratch a little bit, uh, peck at them a little bit in about 15 to 20 minutes, give them time to get off the roost and get down here where we can get a shot at one of those toms. I don't know where she went. I think she went down in the bottom. She must have been passing through. Maybe she'll get one of her boyfriends and bring him up here. We'll keep trying. It's still early. We've been sitting about two and a half hours now. We saw a hen come through, feed a while and then leave. We haven't heard a gobble all morning. Um, I think we're gonna sit just a few more minutes, make our way back to the truck, and talk about a plan for the rest of the day, maybe tomorrow morning if we need to, and see if we can't find out where these gobblers are. We may take a little scouting trip and see if we can't locate a gobbler. After lunch, we return to the same blind. It started out slowly, but it wasn't long before I caught the movement of three birds to my left side, and one of them was fanned out, fully strutting. Okay, we took a shot. When the birds first came out, the camera couldn't see them. The third bird fanned out, he had a full fan. I knew he was an adult bird. He didn't have a big beard, kind of like me, but he's an adult bird. He came out again, he was third still, and I took the shot and he's right over this hill and I'm going to pick him up. I think I see him, he's right over the hump like I thought he was. Looks like he folded up in this road. He's not the biggest turkey in the woods. He, he, uh, he's a young bird, but we got one. Let's pick him up here and get a better look at him. See what we got. Okay, this is our bird. He's a nice, uh, a nice tom. Uh, we made the shot at about 35 yards. He came down this road and collapsed. Uh, folded up right here where we got him. Um, we. Uh, 
we hunted hard this week. It's been a difficult hunt. The weather hasn't been real cooperative. It's been warm, warmed up on us. Now the mosquitoes are out. But we're going to head for the house now and clean this bird up. Well, that concludes our turkey hunt in Alabama. Uh, I still am not a turkey hunter. Well, yeah, I couldn't even kill one in Alabama. I had to get closer to home to Mississippi, and uh, I killed a turkey. Uh, he probably had to be removed from the gene pool, so that, that, that's how that's... <laughs> That's what that is. But anyhow, we both succeeded in getting a turkey. Um, Lee worked so hard to get us a turkey in Alabama. I felt bad that we couldn't get one there, but, you know, it all works out. And uh, we sure hope that you folks can join us on our next show, In the Woods. With Ron and Jerry. In the Woods with Ron and Jerry is brought to you by Envirologic of Alabama. Products that make sense for you and your environment. By Landis International. There is no substitute for perfection. By MPP Incorporated, flying Ron and Jerry to the next day in the woods. By the 500 Magnum Energy Bar, power for now, power for later. And by Karma LLC, an elevated state of awareness.